Canadian neurosurgeons who partner with Elon Musk's Neuralink have been given approval to recruit six patients willing to participate in a study on the technology. The trial will test the safety and efficacy of the Neuralink device. The technology is meant to allow people to move cursors with their minds. That's kind of a basic idea. Neuralink has already implanted two devices in the U.S. Now, the trial will use a robot to implant 64 electrodes into the hand motor areas of the patient's brains. With me now is Andres Lozano, a Toronto-based University Health Network neurosurgeon who was contacted by Neuralink to participate in the trial. Doctor, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Now, directors reached out to you about a year ago. What does that mean? This has been going on. Neuralink's been around for about seven years now working on this. What, what has changed that they're now looking at these trials? Well, it's taken a long time to develop the technology. Uh, these are micro electrodes uh, that are implanted in the brain with a robot, which uh, works very much like a sewing machine. So to develop the technology and to develop the uh, software to be able to analyze these signals and to get these signals to then drive a cursor on a computer screen has taken a long time. This plus the regulatory process uh, has been long as well. But finally, we're ready, and indeed, uh, two patients have been planned in the United States, and now we're ready to do this type of surgery uh, for the first time in Canada. So if, uh, if you find the six volunteers, I'm sure you will, uh, what will this allow them to do if this is implanted? Well, we are specifically looking for patients who are paralyzed, who have severe weakness as a consequence of a spinal cord injury or of having ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So these are people that are very impaired with their arms and legs, cannot move them. What we hope to do is to implant this chip to record the neurons from their hand motor area, which control movements, and to use the signals from those neurons to then drive a cursor on a computer. And so they'll be able to navigate a cursor and they'll be able to click. So this is the, the main aim. And of course, uh, since this is the first time this is done in humans, the main aim of this is to establish whether this is safe and whether this could lead to implants in a greater number of patients in the future. Now, there's optimism with this, but what are some of the concerns or some of the possibilities uh, that could go wrong? Well, this is brain surgery, and uh, there are risks of any surgical procedure, specifically with any operation. There could be bleeding, there can be an infection, the wires can break, the wires can pull out. So there's a number of uh, risks with these procedures. In general, the risks are quite small, and we take every precaution to mitigate those risks. And there's also a, sorry, go ahead. There's also a, a theoretical risk uh, that these signals uh, that are being generated could be uh, uh, tapped. Uh, so, uh, you know, these, you know, the whole purpose of this is to translate thoughts into action. So if someone was able to hack into the system, they might be able to harvest these, these signals and use them for other purposes. So there's a, a theoretical uh, ethical risk of, uh, of uh, hacking into the system as well. And, and for now, it's the simple hope of being able to move this cursor. Not, not that simple, sorry. <laughs> not meaning to downplay that. But where do you see this going? Where, do, where would you like to take this? Well, for the time being, uh, we are going to be recording from the neurons in the hand area to, move, to activate a cursor. But in the future, uh, that instead of activating a cursor, you could, for example, activate a robot or a wheelchair. You could get uh, a robot to, you know, serve you a glass of water. So that's one scenario. Also, in the future, we will might be able to write. So right now, we're just reading the signals from the human brain. But in the future, we might be able to stimulate and activate and put information in. So, for example, someone who is blind because their eyes are impaired, we might be able to feed visual signals from a camera directly into the brain, and the brain would learn to process these signals and, in so doing, reestablish vision. So it is really the first step in uh, really establishing a two-way communication uh, with the brain to be able to t get signals from the brain and also to be able to put information back in. For the time being, the first step is to see whether it is safe to implant electrodes and to get signals out of the brain so that we can control a cursor in patients who have severe weakness and paralysis. And how have the, but we're almost out of time, but how have the, uh, the two people that have had the implants in the U.S., how are they doing? They're, they're doing quite well. Within a very short time, they've been able to, just by thinking, uh, move a cursor to the right and left and click. So really, uh, they're now playing video games. They're using it many hours a day. And this is, you know, the patient has to do quite a bit of homework because they have to actually teach the machine and the machine has to learn how to actually move the cursor, recording these signals and, and translating them into movements of a cursor. So, so far, so good. Uh, we're early days and we have a long road ahead, but it's an exciting journey that we're embarking upon. 
Okay, doctor, I'd love to talk more about this, but we're out of time. Thank you very much, though, for sharing this. Thank you.